Hello, everybody. This is Wanda Alger, and today is Wednesday, November 9. It is the day after the midterms, and I wanted to jump on. I am leaving tomorrow for the Dallas-Fort Worth area for ThreadFest, and I'll be there until next week, and I'll reference that again here at the end of the video. But I wanted to write down a few thoughts uh, and share them with you as to what we are waiting on with the midterms, a huge day uh, yesterday and a huge week yet ahead. Did we get the red wave that we were uh, prophesying and anticipating? I think we did. Uh, it's funny kind of listening to some other commentaries of debating, oh, we didn't quite have the red wave, you know, that we were expecting. But here, here's the thing. I don't, I don't know of anyone that really defined, you know, what percentage would be required or if there was a certain number that we had to, you know, hit to get that red wave. For me, I just kind of made it simple. That red wave means that there has been momentum from conservative <clears throat> Republicans. I got sinus drainage every time the seasons change. So, excuse me. There has been momentum from those who want to see changes in the country. We know what's going on. And there's no question. I mean, so many wins yesterday. And of course, uh, the cheaters will cheat. And we, you know, if it wasn't so sad, you'd have to laugh, you know, when you see the same places and the fact that we can't count votes, uh, it's just ludicrous, really. But here's the thing, you know, as I was writing down the thoughts and just thinking, okay, because I have to look at what what is God doing? You know, what would be the purpose of all of this? Uh, the word resolute came to mind because uh, this is what it's going to require. I, I really think he just is telling us we've got to be resolute uh, to see this thing through contend for these states that are still counting uh, and for things that are going to be contended. I mean, if it's anything like last time, uh, again, this, this could drag out, you know, for days, weeks, who knows, um, you know, and how much contention there's going to be. So we've got to hang out. We've got to be resolute. Uh, I looked up the, the meaning of that word. It means to be admir admirably purposeful, determined, and unwavering. Um, yeah, we're being tested in this. You know, I, I posted something in Telegram this week. I had heard about a, an article written by a, I think a Kathy Gillespie, Gillespie, and she was uh, making a case. She said, why Carrie Lake will lose Arizona? I, it wasn't a very encouraging uh, piece, but yet it made you think, you know, she was trying to lay a case for, you know, what would be the purpose uh, of that happening, you know, from God's standpoint or for the good guys from the white hats, you know, if there's any kind of control in it, why would they let that happen? You know, and the idea was that, well, it'll still help wake up people that uh, still don't believe, you know, that 2020 uh, was nefarious. Well, I, you know, I posted that just that, you know, one possibility uh, on the Telegram channel, and I got a lot of backlash. I mean, a lot of folks were like, we can't go through another loss like this. I mean, I heard the weariness and the frustration from people of, you know, we have been hanging on, we have been painfully and faithfully hanging on and persevering. We need a win, right? Uh, and so it's like, oh, yeah, Lord, we, we need some wins. Well, we got some wins. There's no question about it. Um, people went and voted. We did our part. And I had even written, uh, you know, comparing the stone that David threw, you know, to the Goliath. We've got these Goliaths, uh, you know, that we're up against. And maybe we think that our vote is a small stone, but it's got the wind of the spirit behind it and it's going to hit its target. And I had even said, you know, it's not up to us how the giants fall. All we can do is stand our ground and do our part. And so that's what many of you did. You know, you went out and voted. Obviously, our job is not done. Our assignment is not done. We've got to pray. We need to contend. We need to stand by those who are on the front lines. And uh, as I thought about, okay, just to keep things positive, okay, because I'm wanting to encourage you here. What have been the breakthroughs? I mean, a big takeaway from yesterday, Florida, Governor DeSantis. You know, if you look at, if we even look at uh, where has God blessed, where have we seen breakthroughs? Florida is a huge example of a leader who would not quit. DeSantis never bowed to the fear of man. I actually heard someone yesterday make a comment that he's not the most charismatic leader, but he gets things done. <laughs> that was a very interesting comment. I mean, I haven't followed DeSantis much, 
But there's no question he has been unwavering and resolute as governor of that state. And look at what it has borne, the, the fruit it has borne. These are the kinds of leaders that God is getting behind. And that's going to be required. It's the kind of people that we need to be as resolute, unwavering. And, you know, we got to persevere. And I believe, you know, let's let's hope and pray that what what Florida experienced, I mean, because they they flipped the house. Um, so much happened within that state that that really can multiply many times over in other states across the nation. Uh, you know, as I've said so many times before <clears throat> in other videos, <clears throat> It, it rests so much on leadership. We need to pray for our leaders, for those who know they are called, who have been willing to take that stand. They are being hit left and right. We need to pray for Carrie Lake in Arizona. Uh, you know, who knows where this is headed, but we we have a say in this, okay? And and here's the thing that I, that I wanted to share because I wrote down a few things that, you know, I was asking God about this yesterday and just again, reflecting, okay, in this whole process what has been God's goal and because even if you understand if you talk about the white hats you know in the patriot community and even those who have followed Q okay regardless of your personal feelings about Q Q has had a huge impact on the patriot community and on citizen journalists rising up okay but a lot of the talk then because I think, I think it started with Q, the whole talk about the white hats, right? The good guys, the military, those who are you know working with Trump. So much of our conversation and questioning has been, so what are the white hats doing? You know, what are the good guys doing? And all of a sudden, yesterday, when I was thinking about this, this is what I wrote. We've been watching what they're going to do. But they've been watching us to see what we're going to do. We have approached this journey as one of discovering their moves, not realizing that it is our moves that determines theirs. Now, I want you to catch this. This entire journey has not been about what the White Hats are going to do. It's always been about what we, the people, are going to do. we got to get a hold of this because the whole idea of sitting back and watching a show, it, it may... Uh, affirm that, okay, a lot of this is staged, but, but we can't buy fully into that and just sit back and watch. The whole purpose of this in God's eyes is he's always been after you and I, the people. I believe that this is what the white hats, you know, the good military, all of the decisions that they are making is based upon the people because they know that it's the people that have been called to govern themselves, to govern rightly, you know, to back up the constitution, to know the laws. It's, it's always been about that. And if we understand that, then we can't just sit back and watch. We have to then ask, okay, what is our part? What, what are we supposed to do? And then I wrote, there's never been a magical timeline to determine our course or our process. The only timeline we've been following is the one of our own making. We are the ones that are determining the outcome based on our beliefs, our choices, and our actions. Now, we've come a long way. I mean, we've, we've risen to the challenge. We've chosen what is right. We've stated our case. So many people have spoken out, and, and we're seeing the results. I mean, yesterday was proof. We have seen the impact of standing up of speaking out, of pursuing the truth. And this has always been the aim of the process. And so, you know, we should rejoice and be glad that it's not like we've just been sitting back, twiddling our thumbs, waiting for one event to happen, you know, military intervention. This whole thing, you know, what, what comes to mind is the obvious parallel of a butterfly in a cocoon. The whole metamorphosis that is required before a butterfly has the strength to fly, it must go through that struggle in that cocoon. To try to slit it open and help it out is only weakening it for its flight. I kind of think that that's uh, maybe simplistic, but I think it does describe what we've been going through. Because in our mind, see, this is the thing. 
if we limit the outcome to only, okay, we're going to get a fair election process, we're going to get President Trump back in, in, in office and get some just laws. If that's the extent of our vision for what this has all been about, our vision is far too small. God has something so much bigger in mind. So this hasn't just been about us, you know, learning this process and understanding the laws of the land and getting out and vote and doing our civil duty. It's been much more of recognizing who we are as the people of faith, people of God, unified together. We have a culture that has trained us to be so independent and to avoid one another. COVID only emphasized that. And so this whole process has forced us. We've got to work together. We've got to talk to each other. We've got to connect. Uh, we have to do this together. Because I, God knows that where he intends to take us. I mean, you know, the, the government system, understand that the governments of the earth are only in place so that we can fulfill our higher call. I mean, the real reason that we're here. It, it's to have the freedom so that the word of God can be shared. It's the gospel can go out it, that we can fulfill our commission. This is what it should be unto for any sincere believer in Christ. This is what it's unto. This is, this is not about politics, but it is about a structure that's going to allow us that freedom to do what God's called us to do. <clears throat> so that's the bigger picture is that this is all meant to empower us. Because what is our spiritual adversary been trying to do? Disempower us, immobilize us, <clears throat> trying to, you know, pull the rug out from underneath our feet. And we can't let him do that. And so this is why we have to be resolute, just unwavering in our faith, in what God has called us to do. It looks a little different for everybody. I would say just very practically, if you are in a state where some things are being contested, where there are some irregularities, you need to speak up. I'm going to put a link in the comments, and I'm, I'm not going to say the name because in a past video, I did something similar and I got a strike. Uh, let's just say that uh, the two people that are heading up this organization were recently jailed, recently released, but they are contending for uh, integrity. In, in our electoral process. And so if you see anything, if you know of something that is irregular, that is wrong, uh, they've provided a place where you could report it, either calling or writing in. It's this kind of thing that just practically we need to speak up. You need to let the legislators in your state, in your community know, I have a problem with this. I see this. Here's the evidence. Here's the proof. Because that's what's going to make the difference. And, you know, we don't have to get mean about it. It's simply speaking up with what with what we see and everyone plays a part. Obviously, we need to be praying for those who are, are on the front lines. Those like Carrie Lake uh, and those who have been running who are now hanging in the balance. We need to really pray that they will be resolute as well, that they will be armed with the right information, that they will know the steps to take. I, I know on a, some commentary that I saw yesterday, there was encouragement. Um, it might have been from Seth Keschel that the, these guys really need to act soon. They need to act quickly because in the 2020, uh, sometimes there was too much hesitation when wrongdoing was seen to take any action. And so it was recommended as soon as you see that you need to get in there because we need to stay on the offense, not the defense. And so we do have a, 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 a reason to continue to look, to watch, to speak up, uh, and, and to pray. So in terms of a prayer, I just wanted to share two quick scriptures that you can use, okay? And then I'm, I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about Trump, okay? But um, in, in I think this uh, chapter from the, from the Words to Pray by book is about uh, governing leaders. But there were two that stuck out. Proverbs 10, 29. The way of the Lord is a refuge for the blameless, but it is the ruin of those who do evil. And so the prayer is, God, may those leaders who follow your ways be found blameless and pure in heart. May they experience your sovereign protection and grace because of your faith of their faithfulness to your truth. 
May those who do not follow your ways see the folly of disobedience and reap the results of their destructive decisions. And then Proverbs 24, 5 and 6. And this is a great one for right now. The wise prevail through great power and those who have knowledge muster their strength. That's what we're doing right now. Surely you need guidance to wage war and victory is won through many advisors. So here's the prayer. Give our governing leaders the confidence they need to make the hard calls. When faced with opposition, give them wise counsel and accurate information with which to make the right decision. Cover them with your peace and clarity so they can prevail in times of warfare and strife. Bring our leaders into oneness of heart concerning your purposes so they can move forward with heaven's authority. So again, words to pray by available wandaalder.me or, or Amazon. You know, we got to stand in prayer and contend, be resolute. Um, and something that I want you to do very practically, okay? I had this at the end, but I'm going to say it now. This is, the, this is an idea the Lord gave me. I would like you to share what has been a prophetic word that you have heard in the last two years, even. In this whole journey, you know, of, of waiting on the Lord and praying for a, a righteous outcome. What has been the word of God to you that has helped you to stay faithful, that has helped you to stand strong, that when you have been frustrated, when you have been overwhelmed and tired, it's been that word that has brought you back and said, but God, whatever that is, I want you to put it in the comments below. I, I, want, I want to blow this channel up with words of the Lord that are going to encourage each other, that are going to help us to all stay resolute and unwavering because of what God said, because of what have God has promised. You know, again, what is it in, that you know God has spoken to you? You know, maybe it's been a prophetic word. Maybe it's been, you know, a word from one of the prophets, whatever it is that's helped you and just share it. Okay. And keep it short. Okay. Uh, for, for readability, but let's encourage each other with that. Okay. Now I did want to mention there was a lot of rumors this week that President Trump was going to announce his candidacy for 2024. It appeared, if you watched his rally uh, in Ohio, it looked that like the stage was set that he was going to do that. I mean, there was even a row that was reserved for his family. He had called in some of his closest advisors at the last minute to join him there. Usually when he has fans behind him in his rallies, it was his airplane. The music started at the end when he was starting his monologue, you know, if I, everything was set up that he was going to do it, and, but he didn't. Instead, he said, I have a very important announcement on the 15th of November from Mar-a-Lago. And he said, in order to not take away from the midterms tomorrow, I'm going to make the announcement then. Now, there had been some other rumors that uh, the 15th was when he was going to make some big kind of announcement. I just couldn't help but think everything was set there was he actually going to announce? And then at the last minute, he just decided he couldn't, that he did not want to disrupt the midterm elections with that. I don't know. But here's the thing about such an announcement. I know I have thought before, and God's not told me anything about this. It's just been as I watch and observe, I always thought by announcing uh, a candidacy that that would, be, that would mean that he's conceding 2020. But that's not the case. I realize now that those are two separate things. He has never conceded and he never will until it, you know, it, well, not until he will never concede because we all know what happened. I, I wish we knew. I wish we all knew what happened. Uh, those of us who are paying attention. Okay. So he, he's not, he's not conceding. S announcing a run is simply announcing a run, but, but here's the thing. And these are just thoughts of mine. Again, I've not heard from the Lord on this, but it's just considerations. Because when I have heard people mention 2024, you know, in weeks and months past, I'm like, no, I don't want to hear it because that means that he's, you know, giving up. No, no, he's not. But here's the thing. And Johnny Enlow actually referenced this uh, on Elijah Streams earlier this week. I thought it was very interesting because he too said, um, first of all, uh, well, this is my, my thought, is such an announcement from President Trump is first and foremost signaling to everybody, I am here to stay and I am finishing what I started. 
if there's been ever any question, and there have been plenty from people thinking, oh, he would never run again. I mean, this was an argument I heard six, eight months ago. Oh, that you now he's done. He was so beat up. He's not going to come back, blah, blah, blah. Are you kidding me? <laughs> if you've been paying any attention to his rallies and what he's been saying, oh, no, no, no. By him announcing, it is a, clearly him saying, I am here to stay and I'm finishing what's been started. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not done yet. It would also signal uh, to other contenders that, that he's in the running. And I, I, you know, for the safety of his own party, for the Republican Party, for others who could be legitimate candidates, if, if it were any other kind of scenario, in all fairness to them, uh, it, it could be a good idea to just let them know, hey, I'm here. And then the other interesting thing that, that uh, Johnny said was that there were some legal considerations. Now, I did some research on that. I couldn't find a whole lot. If, if any of you know more, then feel free to share. I couldn't find anything in terms of legally, you know, someone announcing a candidacy. But what I did see numerous uh, articles mention is that to bring charges against it, if, if those on the left, because they've been trying to prosecute and arrest him even before 2016, they've been looking for a reason to arrest him. And so they've got all these, you know, bogus charges, you know, uh, trying to ramp them up. And it's one thing to bring charges and try to arrest someone, even an ex-president, uh, whatever. But to do that after someone has announced their candidacy, that smacks of it's a political move. The perception, it's going to make it a lot harder. In other words, in announcing a candidacy, it's going to make it a lot harder for those who want to prosecute him and to do something to make it look like anything other than just a political move. I think we really need to be praying for him. Who knows what's going to happen over the weekend? Because by him, you know, not and if those if those are the reasons, you know, why announcing something like this could actually be an advantage. Um, by him not doing that, that we just need to pray for protection. We need to pray uh, for God's will to be done concerning this, and that whatever you know charges are being um, trumped up. Uh, that they would just be bogus. There would be no wind behind them at all. Uh, we already know that I, I can't, we can't imagine how many threats against the lives of the Trump family, how many assassination attempts there have already been. We'll probably never know. It's a, I, it's, should be evident that, that God, there's a shield around him. Um, and we just need to continue to stand in that place to pray for that. The other thing, and this is just me personally, okay? But I have a feeling some of you will share this thought or this perspective. Is that when I hear 2024, if you still believe, you know, if you were in early on the whole conversation about the United States corporation versus the Republic, okay? And understanding that concept, this is this is part of the, the understanding of devolution in that, Everything that we think has been democracy in the United States government, it has been, in fact, since the late 1800s, a corporation. Uh, you know, we've, we've been in, you know, living a lie, you know, for decades in, in the government. And that really what this is unto in terms of just our government is getting it back to that republic. Okay. And, and I'll leave a link below. And it, the one link I'm thinking about, it may be kind of old, but it does, you know, if this is new to some of you, it does kind of describe what I'm talking about, gives you a little bit more of an understanding. But my point is, if that's true, I'm thinking whenever I hear 2024, there's a part of me that says, what's 2020, 20, what's 2024? Because if indeed the corporation is proven and, and it goes bye-bye, then 2024, what does that mean? If there really is this idea that, that we will go back to being a republic, that's a totally different framework, okay? So for me, when I hear 2024, I put that way down on the priority list because to me, there's just way too many options, way too many unknowns. I'm not about to get fearful. 
or, or, you know, oh, can we even hang on that long? I just think that there are other things that are going to be a part of this revelation and the, the overturning, the transformation we are headed to. This is going to be a complete overhaul. I, I believe in, in some ways that maybe we're not even expecting. So all that to say, if and when we hear such an announcement, do not panic. Do not think, you know, he's given in. These are just some thoughts that, you know, let's get outside of, of the box that we've put this in uh, because I believe God has been a part of all of this process, you know, and, and as time goes on, I mean, things shift and change, you know, maybe, maybe that argument wouldn't have, uh, you know, panned out a year ago, but this is where we are. And getting back to my original point, this journey that we've been on, it's always been about how are you and I going to respond? Are we going to put our faith into action? You know, scripture says that faith without works is dead. So we can believe all we want and we can speak up you know, all we want, but it's going to require action. And, and this is where we have seen the breakthrough. This is why I was talking about DeSantis and, you know, other things that we have seen that have changed. It's been because people have taken action as we have prayed and sought the Lord. Okay, Lord, this is what I believe. Now, what do you want me to do with it? I mean, that's really what faith should be. It's not just what you think and what you believe. How are you, how is it going to change what you do? How can, how can those prayers become living and active? You know, that, that's one reason why I wrote Words to Pray By. It's not just, you know, putting words to scriptures, but it's I, I purposely wrote them in a way that we could apply them to our, our daily lives because we should see measurable results. If we're not praying in a way that we can see tangible fruit because of what we've prayed, then we probably need to change how we're praying because God wants us to have powerful and effective prayers, prayer, faith. It's the faith behind prayers that changes things. So we've got some things to do. Okay. Um, and, and we each have a part, whether or not you're behind the scenes in front, obviously we can always pray and ask the Lord, is there something else you want me to do with it? Okay. Now, one scripture also that just came to mind, Isaiah 30, 18 says, therefore the Lord waits to be gracious to you. And this is the idea of, you know, lest we think, okay, let's, we're just watching and saying, okay, what's, who's going to come in and save us and rescue us? No, the Lord's waiting on us to, again, put our faith into action. Therefore, the Lord waits to be gracious to you, and therefore he exalts himself to show mercy to you. For the Lord is a God of justice. And then it kind of flips it and it says, blessed are all those who wait for him. So see, there's this relationship, this going back and forth of listening, of processing, of each one doing their part. Um, this, this is what, what God wants us to always stay attuned in. So I am encouraged. Bottom line, I am encouraged. Um, we, we are gaining ground. The momentum is here. The groundswell of support, the prayers, the engagement of people. Uh, there's so many good things. And so again, I want you to leave Leave those comments below that the words of the Lord that have encouraged you, even breakthroughs, if there's other breakthroughs that you have seen, perhaps even in your state or your community, write them down. This is the time we really need to encourage each other because it will help us to stay resolute, okay? Two more things I just want to share in closing. One is that I had referenced, I think I referenced in the last video, uh, a PDF church directory. We call it the Ecclesia directory. This is something that uh, started on Telegram like two weeks ago when I posted, hey, if you're part of a life-giving church, list it below. Name your state, your city, and the name of the church. That was the only qualification I put. Well, it ended up being almost a thousand churches long, and it, and it continues to grow. People keep writing and asking about it. So I want to show you uh, where you can find it on my homepage. This is homepage here. Uh, WandaAlger.me. If you go on the homepage and go below the subscription box right here, right here, PDF, New Ecclesia Directory listed by state and city. And this was just updated yesterday and we're going to update this weekly. Okay. And so this one was just updated. I don't know how many churches are on here. I, th I think it's close to a thousand. Okay. I've already heard back from numerous people uh, about the connections that have been made. Okay. Because of this. 
And so I, I wanted you to be aware of that because it, it's available. And if you want to still be included on this, go ahead and just leave it in the comments. Okay. And uh, my administrative assistant will, will scour through the comments and, and pull those out. Again, like I've said before, these are not endorsements. You need to do your own research, okay, and figuring out, uh, you know, who these churches are, what they believe, go visit. Don't just, you know, take someone else's opinion or, or the recommendation, obviously, but it's a place to start. And I've been really encouraged by hearing back from some people who have, you know, I never knew that church was, you know, just down the road and they made connections. And even online, they were making connections with people that they didn't know lived close to them. That's the whole point of it. Okay. It's just something practical to do. So that is there. The other thing uh, is this weekend in Dallas, Texas, ThreadFest. I wanted to let you know, um, they have a live stream available that if, if you're interested in tuning in, it's uh, it starts, it's pretty much Saturday, Sunday, and I think part of Monday. And they have a live stream available. I think it's $55 that you can pay and then you can watch all of these, all of these speakers. Now, um, I, let me go ahead and, and show you here uh, who to, this is, this is the link here on my homepage. If you go there uh, to ThreadFest, it gives the details here. And if I go um, to ThreadFest show, this is their, their website. And here you can see the speakers. This is Patrick Gunnels. Which, by the way, Patrick and I, we're going to do an interview later this afternoon, and he's going to be posting that on his channel, his Rumble channel tonight. And I'm going to post that. Patel Patriot, those of you been following him, he's the one that started this whole devolution series. Dr. Lee Merritt, Brian Cates, Greg Phillips, J.B. White, Kate Awakening. Some of these people, I don't know, Math, Matthew Trump, Seth Keschel, and my God, Wanda Alger, who's this person? I mean, how I got involved in this thing... I have no clue. I mean, really, uh, the the fact that that they invited me, I think is just it is so God. OK. And so let me also just to let you know, because I don't want the religious spirit to get in here and ruin it. This is not a church event. It is not a Christian event. OK. So if you, you know, go on Patrick Gunnell's channel and watch some of his shows or you, you know, sign up for the live stream. Understand the, these are God fearing patriots. Okay. And what I mean by that is they, the majority of them, they love God and they're pursuing truth, but we're not all evangelical Christians. Okay. There are so many different backgrounds. Okay. Um, but this is why I'm so excited about going. So pray, pray for me and Bobby as we go, pray for this gathering. I think it's very interesting timing that this gathering is happening this week while things are hanging in the balance. I am really praying for some divine appointments, some good connections. Um, you know, and if anything major happens, wow, you know, it's just part of the adventure, right? So, you know, be praying for me in that uh, this is a real opportunity. I, God is going to continue to do these kinds of things in opening these doors. Because this whole thing that we've walked through these last two years, it has brought people together in a way that nothing else ever has. And we're all, you know, we, we've got some things in common and, and God's using it all. And that just excites me. So we get, we keep getting closer and closer to this breakthrough. And I, I want you to be encouraged in that because God, God has been setting this up. We know there are good guys. There are the white hats. There's the military tr Trump. Everyone has their part, but let's remember God. He is the master overseer of this whole process. And he has been working on this for generations. And we get to be a part of this. We are a part of history. This is a moment in time. Lest we forget, you know, scripture talks about our momentary troubles. We may feel like this thing is going on forever and ever. In God's eyes, it is a blip. It, it's just so quick. Because what we are contending for is so huge. Don't forget that it is so huge and it is going to be glorious. So as I said, please leave your comments below um, and, and encourage one another. Follow these links. Check out the interview that I do later with Patrick. I'm going to put that, uh, that link below. 
uh, leave your comments and the words that the Lord has given you to encourage each other. And I will hopefully see you next week. All right, blessings.